friends, Mr. Creep, just not the kind that allowed the cops to charge him. I sent all of my text conversations with Mr. Creep to the police chief in hopes it would help. Mr. Creep slithered away after that, but I always looked over my shoulder. About five years ago, he messaged me on Facebook out of the blue. He went on about his top secret military clearance as well as a huge acreage he owed. It made me nervous and I felt like he was trying to spring a trap or something, but I tried to put it out of my mind. Then today I was looking at posts about an unsolved murder when I saw his mugshot. He is now facing murder charges as well as two other violent felony charges. I am so glad to know he's locked up, but so overwhelmed about how correct my instincts about Mr. Creep were. I feel like I escaped him. It's always good to trust your gut instinct, especially with a 20 year old wanting to date a 17 year old. I feel like, well, it's only three years. That's still a little weird. I don't know. The next one is titled, Man Followed Me Around a Grocery Store. I, mid-twenties, female, went to the local grocery store tonight around 5pm. It's winter and getting dark by 5pm where I live. I was in an aisle taking my time deciding between the options when this late twenties, early thirties looking guy with light features, glasses and a scruffy beard comes up right next to me and just stands there. I didn't think much of it or even look at him at first because I figured whatever he's just looking to. But then after a few seconds I noticed he wasn't moving or doing anything, just standing there. So I looked at him and he was already staring at me and for a half second I thought he might say something to me. So I stood there for a second just looking back at him. He didn't say anything so I just turned and fast walked away. At this point I'm thinking, okay that was weird but whatever, probably just an awkward guy who doesn't know how to talk to women. Then not 30 seconds later I'm in another aisle and I see him out of the corner of my eye coming down the aisle I'm in, again staring right at me. So again I walked away as fast as I could and just went right to the self-checkout. While I was at self-checkout I'm looking over my shoulders the whole time, making sure he isn't behind me anymore, and he's not. I start walking out of the store, relieved that once again I was just being paranoid and I wasn't ever in any real danger. As I'm walking out I decide to look behind me one more time, and there he is, right fucking behind me. I then notice he has nothing in his hands, no groceries, and he's heading towards the door, right on my heels. Without even thinking, I just stop dead in my tracks. I look right at him again. He's already looking at me, and then he puts his head down, looking at his phone, and walks past me out of the door. He brought nothing. I'm so scared at this point, my head is spinning. I didn't know what to do. I can see my car because I park close to the exit, thank goodness. So I call my fiancé and sprint as fast as I can to my car. I jump in, lock the doors, and start looking for this guy. Then I see him. He's aimlessly walking around the parking lot through the cars. He's pretty far away from me at this point, and I have my fiancé on the phone, so I'm feeling somewhat safe again. I watched him walk around for another few seconds before I got out of there. I have no idea what this guy was doing or what his motive could have been. Maybe he was just a weird dude who doesn't know how to talk to girls, or maybe he was a predator with dangerous intentions, or maybe he thought I looked like easy prey for a robbery. The thing I really can't get my head around is the fact that each time I noticed him he was already staring at me. He was not discreet at all and I would think a dangerous predator might be a little more inconspicuous. He also didn't buy anything from the grocery store, which I also can't understand. I was in the store about five minutes before I noticed him, so I'm sure he didn't follow me in the store. Am I being paranoid? There's a lot that didn't feel right, so I'm having a really hard time trying to rationalise this experience. Definitely a creepy encounter. I don't think she's being paranoid at all. That is weird. Like, maybe to turn around and he's staring at her once would be okay, but like, to constantly turn around and he's still looking at her and he doesn't even buy anything. That is weird. Although in these types of situations, it might be better to ask an employee of the shop to walk you to your car. Because while this guy didn't in this situation, it is possible that they're going to ambush you at your car. And he might be working with people or even on his own. So I would always go and get an employee. And if they're a decent person, they should walk you to your car. Okay, the next one is titled A Pair on Nature Trail. Several years ago, I, male 25, probably 21 at the time, was taking an afternoon walk down the nature trail just outside the subdivision where I lived. Note that this trail 
was right next to a moderately busy two-lane road with some houses on the opposite side of the road, so the area wasn't desolate. However, there was a line of trees and foliage that stood between the trail and the road, obscuring the view of one side from the other, so passing cars would not have a clear view of what transpired on the trail. At some point I spotted a woman, late twenties I'd guess, standing alone in the middle of the trail. She stood there and watched me as I made my way down the trail towards her. Once I got close, she asked me if she could borrow my cell phone to call someone. Now I'd already read enough scary stories on subreddits like Let's Not Meet to know about tactics like this. I'd heard the stories about how a woman would ask for aid, get people in a vulnerable position, and then a man would swoop in and take the mark by surprise. I hesitated, but I still gave in to the social pressure and desired to help another person in need. I gave her my phone, despite my better judgement. I was, however, on edge. I tensed up and began looking around the place to see if anyone would pop up from somewhere, ready to react should someone show up. I also made a point to remain standing in arm's reach of the woman. Then I hear rustling from the brush. I instantaneously turned towards the sound and watched as a man looked around at the same age as a woman, was notably quite short, probably around 5'5", five five, emerges from the foliage. I was probably glaring at him with very obvious suspicion as he made his way over to the woman, standing at her side without saying a word. The woman handed me my phone back, saying they didn't pick up, not even reacting to the man's presence. I took my phone and left. What I assume happened is that they were planning to mug my ass, but ended up bailing for whatever reason. Maybe it's because I was visibly on edge and they figured it wasn't worth trying to get the drop on me. Maybe the guy figured there was too much of a size difference between us. Or maybe he'd already put his plan into action, made a little too much noise, and bailed while keeping a completely cool face as he made his way over to his presumed significant other. For my part, I was ready to grab the woman and use her as a human shield, maybe push her on him. Glad it didn't come to that, especially given the outside possibility that there's some non-mugging explanation for this. If the guy really was, like, 5'5", five five, that's pretty short. I don't know. Unless he was, like, really strong. I don't know how many people he would actually be able to, um, overpower. Like, maybe if you're that short, don't try and mug people, because I don't think that's going to be very successful. The next one is Creepy Man in the Elevator. This happened not too long ago. Although not too crazy, it definitely had me freaking out after it occurred. Probably did not help that I frequent this sub often. I just moved to a new apartment building, and it was my first time living alone. It was actually my first day, and I had moved my stuff in and headed to school, and was coming home for the evening. My parking is in an underground basement, which was scary as is for the first few days, so I would always leave my car and book it to the elevator so I could get the fuck out. As I stood waiting, it was taking quite a while for the elevator to come down, and I could hear it beeping on the different floors it was stopping at. Once it finally arrived, the doors opened, and there was a tall guy that was clearly dishevelled, slash on something. The minute I made eye contact with him, my senses went off, and I got the most uneasy feeling. I hesitated, as I was on the last floor, so whenever someone was in the elevator, they were always getting out, and I waited for him to do the same. Instead, he just stood there staring at me, and I managed to blurt out, Are you going up? He mumbled some sort of yeah. Alarm bells were going off, but I thought maybe I was overthinking, so I awkwardly walked in and stood against the wall as far as I could from him. I asked him what floor, as there was no floor selected, and he stuttered between numbers and happened to say the same floor I was getting off on, which scared me even more. I tried to not panic, but as soon as I entered, I tried to keep my gaze down, but he was just facing and staring at me with the most uncomfortable look in his eyes. The minute the elevator started going up, he started to shuffle and was moving towards me, when it ended up stopping on the first floor on the lobby. I was in the left corner near the doors, and he was basically right in front of the door, stepping towards me when the doors opened. I was honestly freaking the actual hell out, and as soon as the doors slid open, I scooched out and went straight out the doors onto the main street. I stood there for a few minutes with my heart pounding because of how scared I was, and I remember him staring at me confused for a minute, and then he stayed back in the elevator as the doors closed. I remember there were two guys standing by the lobby who witnessed the whole thing, and I nervously laughed that I was just creeped out by a guy in the elevator. I believe they were just door dashers, so they just stared at me and were like, okay, LMAO. I ended up taking the stairs up and was scared out of my mind. I was praying he was just someone's guest, hence why he was so confused and weird. 
my dad came to visit me the very next day and I was telling him how badly that guy freaked me out and that same night we ran into him again. He was waiting for the elevator and the minute I saw him I told my dad and made him take the stairs with me again. Thank God I haven't seen him again so I'm really hoping he was a guest but if I ever see an elevator with just one dude in it I do not take the risk lol. May have just been me overthinking but something was definitely not right with him. Yeah that is a little weird. If the lift was coming down and she was on the last floor and he didn't get out, alarm bells would be ringing. That's weird. Because I don't think if, say, say he was on a higher floor and he pressed the button and she pressed it at the same time, I don't think it would go to him and then go to her and then go to their floors, would it? Surely it would drop him off first and then go down to her. I don't know. I don't really know how lifts work. That is weird, and obviously he was walking towards her in the lift. There's no reasonable explanation for that. Okay, the next one is man living in house unknown. Short but considerably creepy one. For context, I was about 10 or 11 when this happened. I live fairly close to a mental health facility for middle-aged to elderly patients who require psychiatric care. You can see it from one of my friend's gardens. One day, me and all my friends are outside playing, chilling, hanging out, the usual. One of the workers from said facility approaches us and asks if we've seen X person with Y and Z clothing and characteristics. Nope. Thinking nothing of it, we kick about as normal. A couple of days pass and one of my friends, who's been staying out late and having sleepovers with friends, tell us that things have gone missing from his house, specifically his bedroom. We're all of the opinion he's being silly and trying to get a laugh out of us. Either that or his mum has moved them. Again, forget about it. We're all out the next day, friend nowhere to be seen. There's a police car outside his house and again, a bit of commotion and hassle in the immediate area. Confused and curious kids, we check it out. My friend appears and tells us the most spine-chilling story. That morning, he's walking upstairs in his home and from his point of view, you can see into his room and specifically under his bed. To his horror, there's a whole grown adult hiding under his bed, asleep. Long story short, it's the missing patient and he'd been in the house for the last two days. Whilst the man posed no significant danger and didn't have any malicious intent, this still creeps me out to this day. Normally, I wouldn't have believed him, but his mum confirmed it and it was the talk of the neighbourhood for a while. Safe to say, I never stayed over at his again, or even stepped foot inside his house. That's his stuff of nightmares. I don't think I'd be able to sleep again if I was that friend. I think he mentioned that He'd been um, having sleepovers, so hopefully he wasn't sleeping in the bed while that guy was underneath. But just the thought of that is horrifying. Oh my god. The next encounter is called My roommate and I woke up to a man watching us sleep. For context, I'm a sophomore in college in a house full of four girls, including myself. We live in the student housing sector and went all out for Halloween decorations, girly ones at that. We live facing towards the main street of the neighbourhood and our backyard has a bunch of trees and bushes. There's a little trail to the back door but it's in a weird place and it's away from the main sidewalk. In terms of our actual house, there's a rather large window on our back door and we didn't have any window coverings so it was clear as day to see into our whole bottom floor when looking through it. I know we should have covered it up sooner but we didn't think this was an urgent matter. One night my roommate and I were watching a movie and both fell asleep on the couch. I never sleep on that couch and neither does she. It's super uncomfortable. In fact we both woke up at separate times this night and just decided to stay on the couch rather than walking the 10 steps to our room. Looking back I feel that it was just a little intuition we had or even a guardian angel. We also had fallen asleep with almost every light imaginable on, so anyone peering through any window could see us on the couch clearly and all of our girly decor. It was about five in the morning and I get woken up by my roommate shaking me saying, B, get up, B, get up, there's someone trying to get in. I instantly shoot up, see her terrified face looking at the back door, then instantly turn my head. I'm literally getting chills writing this. I see a man standing with a hoodie on, holding a flashlight trying to pick our lock. I can still remember the scratching noise he made with whatever he was using. It definitely wasn't the sound of keys jingling, more of a thin wire against metal sound. As we were both staring at him, at this point frozen in fear, he stopped. All three of us 
Ducks were just looking at each other for about a minute when he slowly backed away from the door. My first instinct was to run to the door and make sure it was locked. I've never been so scared walking up to the door and I never want to feel like that again. We quickly called the police and some friends in the area. The police came about 45 minutes later and just told us to call if anything else happens. They said it could be a drunk college student or a person with bad intentions, but we will never know. I still get a sick feeling thinking about it and hope that it was a drunk mistake, but something tells me it was not. We quickly installed more cameras, door slash window stoppers and covers for every part of the house. Three weeks later we had a break in, but that's a story for another time. Interested in hearing people's thoughts about this. Wow, the police were so helpful in this case. Way to state the obvious that it's either a college student or a person with bad intentions. Like, how is that helpful? <laughs> and I felt like it probably wasn't a drunk college student because why would they be trying to pick the lock? I'd understand if maybe they had a key and were trying to put the key in the lock. That's very different from picking it, surely. But that's creepy to know that he would have known and seen that them two were asleep on the couch and he was still going to go in. Because I felt like he probably wasn't planning to rob them because you'd be stupid to do that when people are in the house. Oh, that's too creepy. Okay, the last post that I'll read for today is called Still Don't Know Why I Wasn't Scared. I, female 36, wish this wasn't real. Let me start by saying it's crazy how children are so trusting. Maybe it was just me. When I was seven years old, my parents and I were living in a basement apartment in the Bronx. The way the apartment was set up had my mother and father's room at one end of a short hall, the bathroom in the middle, and my room at the other end. If you don't know anything about a basement apartment, just know that it doesn't take much effort to enter one through a window. One very early morning, possibly around seven or eight, I was woken up by a very hard, sharp-like pain on my butt cheek. I got up thinking our cat had gotten in my room and had bit me as she used to nip hard and had attack at whatever she felt like, toes included. I jumped up looking for her only to see a grown man sitting on my bed. I remember being upset and asking him why did he pinch me, to which he hushed me and said something about him being thirsty. I remember pulling down my nightgown to cover my butt and asking him if he wanted juice or water. I wasn't scared at all, more surprised and mad that this man pinched my butt hard. He said that he wanted juice, so I left my room and closed my door with him still sitting on my bed. I walked to the kitchen and got him some juice. As I was bringing the cup back to my room, I looked at my parents' door and thought that I should wake them up, but can't remember why I decided against it. I ended up giving the man the cup and he drank the juice. I remember he asked me if I could help him find his friend, and him telling me he was lost. I remember that my dad had told me that I wasn't allowed to go outside without him or my mother. They were worried as this was a new neighbourhood we had only moved into maybe two weeks earlier. I remember being scared to go outside because I didn't want my parents to be upset with me, so I told him that I had to wake up my parents to ask. I remember he said that it would be real quick because he knew his friend was somewhere in the area and we would find him quickly. I once again said no and told him that I was not allowed to go outside without my parents. So he ended up saying that he didn't need my help anymore and that he would find them. He asked me to lock the door behind him, so I walked him out and locked the front door, waving him goodbye. I tried to go back to sleep, but it was too late. I was awake, so I started watching cartoons. Well, the volume happened to be louder than expected, because my mother woke up and asked me, very angrily, why was I awake so early? I told her all about the man pinching my butt hard, to which at first she didn't believe me, as she thought I had a bad dream. But she lifted up my nightgown, and I guess I must have had a bruise. I will never forget how she got so calm and she started smiling at me and with a very sweet voice started asking me what did he look like, what happened and if I remember what he was wearing. I told her to which she left my room for a moment, coming back with my dad. She then told me to tell him everything using that same sweet voice and I did. I didn't think I was in trouble or anything and I thought I had made a new friend. After telling them about my new friend, they got dressed and started searching. Well, it didn't take long because he happened to be the super's family member. When I saw him, I immediately shouted at him, Hey friend. My parents told me to go inside, which I did. Maybe an hour or so later, my parents came back with McDonald's for me, but they seemed angry. Before the end of that day, my father put a padlock on my door and told me that whenever I go to sleep, to always lock my door as our kitchen windows didn't lock. That's how he got in. Sometime later, I was 15, I found out that the guy was mentally ill and was sent away from Dominican Republic by his family so he wouldn't get arrested for something he did out there with another little girl. Yep, but that's it. It still surprises me that I wasn't scared. Please, if you or anyone you know lives in a basement, ground level apartment or flat, please triple check that all the window locks work and lock your windows up. God, that's awful. 
super is. Is it like a superintendent or something? I don't know. But I'm hoping that they actually um, got him some help because you can't be doing that. God, I can't imagine what those parents must have felt when they realised that something was so close to happening to their daughter. God knows what, because I don't know, obviously, what he was planning or if he even really was planning anything but the fact that he'd done it to another little girl. I'm sorry, but family members need to stop protecting people that commit crimes. If one of my family members committed a crime, there is no way I would protect them, no matter who it was. Because there could have been another victim here. Like, that's disgusting. I've just read the comments. And they said that the super ended up sending the guy to another family member somewhere in Brooklyn. So he got away with it again. Stop sending family members away. They need help. You need to stop him from doing this. Not just send him away for him to do this again. What is wrong with people? That was all of the creepy encounters that I have for you today. I hope you all enjoyed them. And as always, they'll be linked in the description, so feel free to go and read the comments and upvote them.